Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest Linus Tech Tip video about gaming on Linux, which they have titled Linux Gaming is Not Ready. I'll link the original video in the description below because I won't cover the entire video here, but I'm just going to respond to some more interesting points. And my main thing here is that Linus is both wrong, but also right about the state of gaming on Linux. So let's take a look. There are a plethora of reasons to transition your daily driver gaming rig over to Linux. You could be sticking it to the man. Or wanting to support the open source community. Maybe you daily drive Linux for work already. And all your games are natively supported anyway. Or maybe you just want a new and challenging hobby. But if what you want is a simple, painless gaming experience, then let this be a cautionary tale. One of trials, tribulations, and of course, sponsors. A few other reasons why you might want to switch from Windows to Linux is for the privacy, the no tracking, the no advertisements built into the OS, forced Windows updates, and a lot more choice and customizability in Linux. For most of our one month challenge, Luke and I avoided specifically seeking out titles that would either validate the Linux gaming experience or intentionally make it look bad. We just focused on playing the games that we would normally want to play. Or at least we tried to, because not all the games that we wanted to play actually worked. The very first day I installed Linux, I also tried to play the Battlefield 2042 beta. The previous day, still on Windows, I owned some noobs with my buddy. I do like this approach that they played just the games that they wanted to play, rather than coming in with like a certain type of game, whether it was specifically only multiplayer, single player, they kind of just went at it like from a noob perspective. So that's a good thing. If something doesn't work, screw it. I'll just play something else. Luke, on the other hand, whose social circle is deeply immersed in gaming culture, has so much more on the line if he can't solve a problem. Yeah, like I literally had a friend ask, hey dude, when are you gonna be back? Obviously I had never actually left but I was a lot more difficult to include as a lot of competitive games that have anti-cheat just don't work. Or it took me so long to get a lot of games to a satisfactory level that by the time I was ready, everyone else was just done gaming for the night. And this is a fair point in my experience streaming and playing multiplayer games or trying to play multiplayer games on Linux with Windows users. They have to ask, hey, we want to play this game or we're thinking of playing this game. Does this work on Linux? And then I have to go to ProtonDB to check and then be like, oh yeah, this works or this game doesn't work. And so that's kind of been uh, an experience there. But from my perspective, at least, it's not too disappointing because there's enough games that work that we just find a different game to play. So, But I could totally understand that that could be frustrating for some users. And as a lot of my friends like to just try random games out for fun, this actually happened a lot. Our goal is not to spread FUD about the state of Linux gaming though, so it's time to get specific about some of our less good experiences. First up is Steam, or rather, not Steam. Valve's goal of reaching 100% compatibility with the entire Steam game library is admirable. Actually, incredible. As noted by this here Reddit post, the Steam game library is chock full of amazing gaming experiences from AAA studios and indie developers alike. But it's also not the silver bullet that it would have been 10 or even five years ago when nearly every game worth playing was available on Steam. Half of Twitch's top 20 games, at least at the time of filming this, are not on Steam. And I know being a popular game to stream doesn't necessarily mean it's popular with random gamers out there, but these are all very big name games. And being on Steam isn't an automatic win either. Look at Apex Legends and New World, both massive games, both listed as borked on ProtonDB. This is a very critical point that, yeah, it is true that for streaming specifically or games popular on Twitch, a lot of them don't work on Linux, not with easy anti-cheat or some crazy workarounds. And even if we were to get full compatibility on Steam with Steam games, a lot of those popular multiplayer games won't be playable out of the box at least. And as they point out, even some games that are currently on Steam like Apex don't quite work yet. So it's not the silver bullet as they say, but 
I guess the part that they sort of don't emphasize enough is that it's still a massive achievement that most of the games on Steam work and that for a lot of people that may be enough. Obviously, if you're into multiplayer games that are popular on Twitch, Linux is not for you, at least not yet. And so, yeah, if, if you primarily game on Steam and let's say you don't really play multiplayer games, then you'll be fine. And that's the whole thing with this video being both right and wrong about Linux. I think the title is somewhat misleading, but I get the point that they're making. Native Linux games are obviously gonna be your best bet. Wanna try one of my personal favorites, CrossCode? Click install, click play, and as simple as that. In addition to that, while not necessarily native, I played Legion TD2, Towerfall Ascension, Faster Than Light, Slay the Spire, Path of Exile, and Rust, and they all worked perfectly with zero actual effort. The next tier is Windows native games that Valve officially lists as Linux capable via Steam Play. But before we go any further, I just wanna say massive respect to the incredible teams who have worked tirelessly to make running Windows games on Linux possible. Valve's Proton compatibility layer is amazing. It's forked from Wine, which has been multiple decades in the making with about half of its source code written by volunteers. That's freaking wild. And of course, honorable mentions all around for the dedicated communities that maintain tools like Lutris, which automates hacky workarounds for newbies, and ProtonDB, which serves as both a troubleshooting resource and a reference for which games work so you won't have to waste your money on a bad experience. With all of that said, in spite of so that's good that they do stress that in the video. A lot of people have been working on bringing Windows games to Linux. And just so that people get a sense of the trajectory where this is going. Even if someone comes away watching this video and thinking, wow, Linux gaming sucks, they can kind of see that, hey, you know, there's so many people working on it. You've got Steam with Steam Deck coming out. The promise of gaming on Linux looks good or the, the hope that it'll work and just get better and better soon is a good thing. And I think that will leave a good impression on people at least. All of that work, we're honestly just not there yet. And we're mere months from the launch of the Steam Deck when 100% compatibility is supposedly coming, which as of writing this, just got pushed back by two months to February. Natively supporting Linux is seen by some developers as a somewhat brutal experience. Ben Gollis has a rather enlightening thread about this on Twitter. He goes on to explain that while Linux gamers were a very vocal part of their pre-launch community, they accounted for less than 0.1% of sales, yet they generated more than 20% of auto-reported crashes and support tickets. He also stated that near the end of his time there, nearly 100% of tickets were still Linux related, despite Linux receiving the majority of the engineering effort, meaning the company likely spent hundreds of thousands of dollars supporting a community that made them a few hundred in sales revenue. And this isn't the only version of this story. And every time problems like these happen, it's just more ammo for developers that would rather spend zero time working on Linux versions of their products. I believe that is why over 65% of reported anti-cheat enabled games have not confirmed Linux compatibility, despite many of the anti-cheat developers getting on board. That's a really good point that um, as much as people don't like to agree on this, a lot of really popular games are made by private companies and because they're for profit, a lot of the times they don't wanna support Linux or even officially say that their game works on Linux because Linux users right now make up a tiny fraction and they write most of the complaints, I guess. So there's no financial incentive for, for a lot of companies to bring support to Linux, even if their game could officially run to some degree. But of course, that's going to change with the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is going to bring more users. It's going to make it easy for developers to publish their app or get their app working because of this compatibility layer. And as the user base increases, now developers will start to take Linux seriously. There were more than a few comments in the chat criticizing us for choosing to play that particular game because it's old, it's just some crappy Java game, it's, it's obscure, or because it's not fair to Linux, or whatever. But the bottom line is that none of that matters. 
What matters is that we like it and we wanted to play it, but instead of doing that, we played Terminal Command Simulator. And honestly, I've gone through enough of that over the last month that it has sucked a lot of the enjoyment out of using my computer. Like, I have a pretty busy life, and when I manage to salvage an hour to relax and play video games, that is what I want to do. And it's really opened my eyes to why so many people choose to play on console instead of on PC. Like, this has got to be how a not super computer savvy user feels about updating a driver or fixing a firewall setting every time they just want to play a bloody game. To be clear, I would never say that just because some old game doesn't run, it means that Linux sucks. In fact, I've permanently switched my laptop over to Linux because there are a lot of things it just does really well. Even That's a good point. And I actually like, again, that they tested random games because it really is almost like trying to find a flaw or an exploit in Linux gaming. And I think this, is, this can only make Linux better and even more compatible. And I could understand it'd be frustrating that when you game, that's your time to relax. And the last thing you want to do is tinker around with anything. And that's why you have consoles. It's really pick up and play. PCs, at least gaming on Windows, is for the most part pick up and play. And so for Linux to succeed, it has to also just be pick up and play. What it does mean is that gaming on Linux can kind of suck. With this video, a lot of people may get the impression that Linux sucks, but Linux already can do a lot of things very well. Again, because it's better for privacy, for data tracking, for updating your, your apps. It's a much better experience already than Windows. And a big area where it's not the best is gaming. But again, that's mostly because game makers are not devoting to it because there's not a lot of people using Linux. So it's kind of like that chicken and egg problem. Gaming is not the best right now. You could obviously see with Steam and Valve support that it's going to get better. And Linux can do a lot of really good things already. Overall, I'm really happy I did the challenge. I learned a lot and it gave me a lot of hope for the future. And I will absolutely be trying to stick with Linux when the Steam Deck shows up sometime next year. But to summarize the question that we set out to answer, is this the year of the Linux desktop? For gamers, the answer is no. I'm sorry. And the more niche your use case gets, you know, maybe you're super into modding or the racing or flight sim scenes, or maybe you're a big VR lover, the more resounding that no gets. And if I'm being honest, I'm in the same camp. But something has given me a lot of hope, and that's how much positivity we've seen from the Linux community in spite of our concerns. Because even if I'm not ready to convert my gaming rig just yet, it gives me hope that one day the meme will end and the year of the Linux desktop will come. I'm as anti-monopoly as anyone, and I'd hate to see the status quo maintained forever. Okay, so yeah, that was a good summary. Again, um, the video may upset a lot of people, a lot of hardcore Linux fans out there. They came to the right conclusion. So Linux on gaming overall is not ready, but it might be ready depending on your use case. If you primarily play on Steam and you don't play that many multiplayer games, maybe mostly single player games, then you'll be all right. If on the other hand, you want to be like a Twitch streamer, then you're probably going to run into issues playing a lot of multiplayer games, but not necessarily, you know, it's, you're going to have to pick and choose really, because I've been streaming and playing multiplayer games. And I think part of why I'm not too disappointed with it yet is that it's my own bias that I kind of know not every game is going to work. And so the expectations are different, but I've been able to play some games like Among Us, Phasmophobia, the crab game, which is a squid game inspired game. New games like Valheim work fine. So I've been able to play a lot of games. And uh, of course, you know, feel free to subscribe and catch me streaming some games. And then I have, I've been using Popoist, which has a very cool tiling feature. So I've been able to use one monitor and easily tile four different windows like OBS, Discord, YouTube chat, Twitch chat. And my streaming experience has been pretty good. But I know that's not the case for a lot of people uh, for streaming for multiplayer games. But at least people can see that with the Steam Deck and Valve pushing Linux gaming forward, it's not hard to imagine that this will attract more developers, more support, and hopefully other big companies to release their games on the Steam Deck or even for Linux in general.
maybe we'll see the Epic Store officially launch for Linux, the Ubisoft Store launch for Linux. What's also cool about gaming on Linux is that we're seeing a sort of snowball effect with the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is putting Linux on the map enough so that the Linus Tech Tips team tried Linux for a month and that led to a lot of bug fixes for Linux getting fixed and it's leading to other distros in trying to make the gaming experience on Linux better. Even recently Ubuntu is hiring someone as a gaming desktop lead and it's that sort of buzz that is going to bring more people to Linux. Stick around, it's going to be an exciting year for gaming on Linux and we'll see where it goes. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.